Good morning, Mineola. Um, I so hope that you had a wonderful couple of days over MEA weekend. Um, I was able to get away a little bit, um, which was nice. And, but you know, back at it and you know, now we have snow. So we'll just see how much we get today, but I am going to pretend like it's not happening. Um, you know, denial, it's a real thing. So as I kind of got back into things yesterday, one of the things I do is I'm, um, I've joined this little bit of a online tech study with some folks who um, also are doing the narrative lectionary. And so um, we were talking about it and it's a doozy this week. So um, about God's promise to David. So it's going to be fun. So definitely tune in. But one of the themes that I'm considering working with is um, the idea of um, growing where we're planted, that that God as that gardener um, is the one who grows us and that we, we do that where we are um, and that God gives us a place and because it's God also a time um, to do that and to be, um, and to be present that way. So um, one of the folks yesterday pointed me to um, On Being this past weekend with Otis Moss III, which um, Krista Tippett, On Being on NPR, which I, you guys have heard me talk about Otis Moss III, Reverend Otis Moss III. Um, he is the pastor at um, Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, and I've heard him preach in person a few times and um, during the midst of this COVID time, as well as um, some of the racial um, reckoning that's been going on within our country, I have found him to be a voice of great um, word, um, a voice for my soul. And so I have found myself um, tuning into him on Sunday evenings and, and really um, grappling with his, his word and the way in which he understands God's work in the world right now. So I, of course, listened to On Being on the way down here. Um, not finished yet. I have a little bit left of it. But he told this story about Howard Thurman um, and the story that Howard Thurman always taught, told. Um, I just am going to read this to you. So these are not my words. This is Otis Moss III speaking to Krista Tippett on Bean. Um, if you do podcasts, you certainly can find it that way. You can Google this and listen to the whole thing as well just over the internet if you're interested. But I just I wanted to share this with you today. So Otis Moss III, Reverend Otis Moss III. Yes, it's beautiful. And there's a story that I absolutely love about Thurman that he tells about his grandmother. That his grandmother owned some land and there was a white woman who was adjacent to the land and did not like the fact that this black woman owned land. And so she decided he, um, so she decided she was going to get back at Thurman's grandmother and went to her chicken coop and got all the manure and dumped it on her land and upon her tomatoes and her greens and everything she was growing to destroy it. But his grandmother, when she realized there was all this manure, just had destroyed everything, she would get up in the morning and take the manure and just mix it in with the soil as fertilizer. And so the woman would dump at night and Thurman's grandmother would get up in the morning and turn it over and mix it. And so the woman next door, the white woman next door, eventually fell ill. And she wasn't just mean to black people, she was mean to everybody. So nobody came to her when she became ill. But Thurman's grandmother went next door and brought her some flowers knocked on the door, heard this frail voice, and she came, and the woman was completely shocked that this black woman, who she had been so cruel to, would come and see her. And she was so deeply moved by this kindness. And Thurman's grandmother placed the flowers next to the woman, and the woman said, These are the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. Where'd you get them? And Thurman's grandmother said, You helped me make them. Because when you were dumping in my yard... I decided to plant some roses. And Thurman talks about from the manure, what can blossom? There are some who allow the manure to fall on them and others who just turn over the soil to make something new. Now that is so African. It comes out of the black tradition because we know manure, but we also know fertilizer that can plant new things. I just... I think a lot of us feel like a lot of manure is falling on us in a lot of different ways and from a lot of different places. And 
this idea that to turn it over and to let something blossom, to plant something in that which can perhaps fertilize us, and even just not even as individuals, right? But as communities, as um, states and countries and um, civil communities to like the whole world, to Christian communities, what we can do, what God can do with manure. You know, I think we forget that our God is a God of the dust. Our God is a God who overcomes death. Our God is a God of taking the weak and making it strong, of overturning that which the world understands as bad and, and smelly and um, insignificant and making greatness out of it. Perhaps our God is a God of manure, who takes manure and makes beautiful things. I think there's a real, it requires something of us, right? It requires us to really see the truth of what's going on in our lives, but also gives us that moment of respite, that moment of, it. we don't even have to be the ones doing it. God is going to do it. God is going to help us turn manure into beautiful roses, beautiful flowers. So remember, it's about what God does for us. Not what we do for God. So with that, let us pray. Deep and holy God, the one who turns over this world on its head, reminding us that it is not in our power, our strength, or even our perseverance that the world is made yours, but is through the weak, the vulnerable, the places that this world calls dead, places of manure, which you use to bring life, to bring joy, to bring that which really matters. Love, your love into this world. As a community today, we pray for so many we pray especially for Nancy and David, continued prayers for Alex and Ashley, for Corey and Pam. And today we add Holly to our prayers for a quick recovery from COVID-19. We pray for all those who are suffering under COVID, whether they be in nursing homes, in their homes, in hospitals, across this country and around the world. And for those grieving death, death on so many fronts. We pray for the families in Kenyan who are living into the terrible loss and uncertainty. Those two young boys, young men who are in a terrible accident. Help them know that they are being held in love and prayer. Send your spirit of comfort in a time where comfort seems so far away. For the families and the communities that are reeling from that tragedy, we pray. We continue to pray for our country. We know we are in a place of polarization. Help us all be places of compassion and care where we can see you in each other and in those around us. Let us not forget the humanity, the Christ within each person. We pray for all those in the educational system. We continue to pray for those in the medical system and for those who are in public service. This is our time. This is the time that we are in. Help us be present to it, to see truth 
and love and help us to stand shoulder to shoulder as the children of God and as the body of Christ. In your most holy and gracious name, amen. Peace to you all. I hope you have a good day, a good week. And um, for those of you in Goodhue County, all things go well. We will be having um, our first in-person indoor service this Sunday, uh, October 25th, so um, at 1030. So if you are available, um, please uh, feel free to join us either in person or we will continue to live stream as well. So thank you all. Um, have a beautiful Tuesday and uh, till next time.